Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another uh, episode of Matrix Moments. Uh, I am very, very excited about uh, today's panel. Uh, we have a fantastic set of people uh, uh, to, you know, with us today. We're going to cover, uh, you know, sort of recent trends in gaming in India. Uh, uh, all of us who've been sort of listening to uh, uh, the Matrix podcast would know that gaming is one of the sectors that we're very, very bullish about. Uh, there's a few themes within that that we've been spending time on, and the thought today was to bring you know together a bunch of people who are very very experienced and very knowledgeable about what's happening in gaming in India and globally as well. Um, you know, within gaming, esports and e-streaming is something which has really really taken off through COVID. So you know, we're going to talk about that as well. And towards the end, we'll spend a few minutes talking about you know Web three, NFT, GameFi, and a bunch of all the exciting sort of buzzwords that. All of us have been hearing about and try to you know break it down and see you know how real it is and you know what the opportunities are. So I couldn't be more excited to welcome our three panelists today. Uh, I'll start with Manish. Manish, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you know I've been good friends, but you know I always learn a lot from you every time we speak. Uh, Manish, uh, for those who don't know, is the CEO at Nazara Technologies, which is uh, India's only listed uh, uh, online gaming company. Uh, so Manish, thank you again for doing this. Um, I'll just go in order. The second is, uh, you know, Thomas. Thomas is the founder and CEO of Omelet, uh, which is one of the leading uh, sort of e-streaming uh, platforms and community platforms globally. Uh, and Thomas is going to add a global view to see, sort of share what he's seen around the world, but more so in India as well, given you'll have a lot of customers in India as well. So Thomas, again, welcome and thank you. And last, uh, Anirudh, Anirudh, uh, you know, uh, is, is, is a well-known personality in the online gaming space in India. Uh, Anirudh is the founder of uh, Loco, which is one of India's largest sort of e-streaming platforms. Um, Anirudh, thank you again for being here with us for this. Uh, really looking forward to your insights as well. Uh, I'm going to also just quickly introduce my colleagues, uh, Ayush and Rahul, who are actually going to sort of uh, MC this uh, discussion for us, and I'll just keep you know butting in with my with my comments and questions. Uh, Ayush and Rahul are part of the you know uh, gaming team at Matrix. They spent time with me on gaming investments. Um, you know, uh, Ayush, over to you. Uh, maybe you could start uh, with uh, a few thoughts from your side, uh, and then you know open it up to the panel for you know the questions that we want to cover today. Sure. Thank you so much, Tarun, and welcome again to all the panelists. We are we couldn't be more excited to have you guys with us. So maybe I'll start with quickly covering our outlook on this space. Would want to keep it short and then would open it up, right? So just double clicking on the COVID tailwind point that uh, Tarun mentioned. The way we see it, and 2020 and 2021 were perhaps the watershed years for the Indian gaming industry, right? Today, we are one of the top five markets globally in terms of viewers. And India today has, what, 400 million plus gamers. And the number keeps on increasing day in and day out, right? And all of the viewers, all of the streamers, everybody is looking for alternate forms of gaming entertainment, right? What COVID has also done is propelled this creation, e-streaming e and creation as a from a pastime to actually a career option, right? The fact that five of the top 10 YouTubers are e-streamers who are earning more than what a million dollars on YouTube alone is a very big testament to this fact, right? India also possesses a very unique opportunity in the sense that we were a, we are a mobile first market. We completely leapfrog the PC and the console gen, which also provides very unique opportunities to build mobile first solutions for the Indian market. And what Tarun mentioned, coupled with the advent of Web3, GameFi, the space is only getting more interesting, right? So what we think is as the gamer base keeps on expanding and with all of these macro factors, e-streaming and e-sports is going to become a very key trend going forward. And that's why I think we are very excited about this entire space, about the exciting founders that are building in this space and the innovative business models that are coming up, right? So with this, let us just dive in and maybe we can start with e-sports, right? And as I said, e-sports, is slowly and steadily growing, has now become what the second largest destination after IPL with more than 20 million plus viewers across tournaments, right? So Manish, maybe would love to get your thoughts on this given you run Nordwin, which is the largest esports player in India today, right? So having looked at the esports industry for so long, would love to get your perspective on how have you seen this space evolve, particularly over the past two, three years? And where do you think this space is headed? What would really usher the next level of growth? So guys, uh, this space 
my brush with this space started in 2012 uh, and that and and the disclaimer is i'm antique um so that is that is how um, in in busan in korea i saw e sports tournament and a massive stadium completely full of young kids and they were watching something on stream and there were some some another set of younger kids playing on the stage and and i said yeah what is happening here um and you have one has seen football matches or cricket matches before that and you really didn't know and then you suddenly click oh they are playing a game and there is a there is a set of uh professional players so to say who are, who are sitting there and they are kind of really playing and these are all their fans which are clamoring uh, and they're kind of rooting for them as they kind of go about and kid you not that was the time when i thought that this is something in india which will go really crazy because of our young population and gaming is a conviction which one developed long long back so now in sports entertainment um around with the context of gaming is something which i have been very bullish and that's why as nazara when we uh, partnered with akshat at nordwin in 2017 um i remember telling my board what is esports and i had to really dig out some videos to kind of show to them what is esports and why this will become big and they said can't you find something better to invest in um and they then kind of really wasting time on 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 all of this and i think fast forward the conviction and belief has only strengthened with every year and as ayush you mentioned last two years have been amazing catalyst for the viewership uh i really believe that a few factors underlying factors one it's on mobile it's i can play as a team versus team every day and that is my community platform to kind of unwind i it is weather resilient i don't need to worry about rain heat whatever it is convenience of playing every day is there it leads to conversations because i when i'm playing as my team my other friends are also kind of watching and then the entire hierarchy of sports really kicks in where you have zero to hero stories those celebration of those hero stories you have fandom happening you have uh, people who want to aspire to become a college hero or a city hero or a state hero or national hero so all of that really kind of is built into this sports ecosystem and the beauty of this is the format is shrunk into let's say 18 minutes uh so i was watching five days cricket match then odi happened and then t20 happened and i think now it's a 18 minutes with seven matches or nine matches happening so your curve of emotional curve is amazingly sinusoidal and you can really kind of have your um underdog feeling of somebody kind of coming back after chips are down so i think those are the elements which i believe uh that if not bigger but at least as big as cricket viewership is what we are kind of really banking upon in in indian subcontinent uh for cricket and we have a larger theory that the emerging markets e sports will be number two sports besides whatever is popular as number 1 if it's soccer in africa it will be soccer and then esports if it's cricket it's cricket and esports and that's what we are really going after and building not very thanks manish manish just picking on one point that you mentioned right that now more and more different types of players are coming in different category of players are coming in there's literally what anirudh calls it a cambrian explosion of talent happening in esports right so how do you see that happening how have you seen that evolve in terms of also the demography of players actually playing right the type of players playing this game and where is this heading i think the key thing which i am still uh, the opportunity is there is a bottleneck in that opportunity is the number of games which can really command esports viewership uh to me that is uh, you take out esports viewership and bgmi viewership today in india after free fire ban and you will really find that the viewership shrinks right and and anirudh can give more details on that so i would like to have 15 equivalent games which can really command that kind of viewership right and then the heterogeneity of your players and their cohorts their profiles their things would kindly be very very distributed otherwise today we are kind of really talking about one game players maybe language vernacular place when they are playing kind of things they are doing that could vary 
but the number of games is what i think is needed uh, for the true potential or true dream which i have for it to really come and play out got it anurudh would love to get your thoughts on this with you know tournaments such as the world series of poker coming in and the money ball moments happening right where not a pro poker player but just a normal accountant coming and winning millions of dollars right how do you think this would influence the new upcoming players the new upcoming esports players right and what more can be done to you know really get people interested in this game yeah i think look for me the first brush i think when he structured it very well my first brush was when i was running pocket aces i had a very big advantage compared to every other entrepreneur is that everybody in my company was very young so whatever they were doing always gives you a sort of insight into where the market is going and everybody was playing what was then called pubg mobile at the time and that started really got me thinking what's going on here and and that led us to you know change the complete business towards game streaming and today when you look at it if you know if i have to compare it to manish uh, gave an example of cricket uh, you know i say that you know kapil dev has just been born and you know sachin is not arrived yet ms is not arrived but what is going to happen is all these guys are going to arrive in a much shorter frame of time and i refer to this cambrian explosion because what's happening is with the old world of sports you could see cricket half an hour a day then it became one hour then you can put see it all day and as you got more and more accessible forms of entertainment more and more supply of talent came through because even parents said okay our my kid can become an ipl player when i was i used to play a lot of cricket growing up you know you only saw the 10 20 guys again and again just rotating through now there's like every team has like many people it's become a profession and you can have a fun time what i am seeing now is <clears throat> what i call the sort of wsop effect uh, right which is different from the money maker effect i just coined this term wsop effect which is if you see and i'm a big poker player is like every time there's a famous guy on screen in the wsop some other guy on the table pushes all in 100% because at least he gets on tv right and usually with poker there will be some 30% chance or a 20% chance so it's not you like you don't have any chance you could win if you win like you're a legend in your town on your friends right i'm seeing that in esports as well where smaller teams are sniping the bigger teams they know where these guys land they know where these guys are slow they know what's happening and so they will go for the big team so rather than you know sometimes you might take a strategy that i'll go for a small team they go for the biggest team right away and you see this times uh, right now we have bmoc live on loco which is becoming bmps which is a very prestigious sort of i would call it the grand slam type uh, tournament a lot of the invited teams are out because they were caught napping and i think this is just the start and i also have a theory like to become good at anything you have to spend a significant amount of time um on that right and in india people have a lot of time and you look at from an entertainment point of view actually gaming is much cheaper than a lot of other forms of entertainment and i mean gaming i mean this sort of pubg mobile free fire bgmi this sort of gaming which is kind of free to play so you end up have you know your even if you include um sort of uh, you know in app purchases it is about a third of what netflix costs right and if you don't purchase so it's cost just data cost so it you know when you're in a smaller village or town what are your options for entertainment right and now you know with this the infrastructure required is not that much you just need a phone so you're seeing a huge demand and we're seeing it we're seeing insane numbers on honestly we just saw very small tournament like on loco it was not some big tournament already 200000 plus people watching at the same time so concurrency of 200k plus acu i'm a big liverpool fan as you can see and i've not seen too many liverpool games this year also with 200k plus acu on hotstar so i think we are we are getting there and i just want to end with a simple anecdote you know you know i often say sometimes you follow the data and sometimes the data follows you um so you know the two anecdotes i wanted to show one is my uh, nephew recently uh, ping me and said hey can you help me meet uh, you know scout which i was like why do you want to meet scout he said oh this i want to be scout when i grow up right that's like the idols and the pop culture you know uh, icons are changing and recently my partner ashwin he he got a uh, he asked someone at a party who's their favorite uh, sports person and honestly we were saying it just thinking about who oh, can we sign etc do we need a brand ambassador and we were thinking honestly i was thinking actually it will be like uh, rishabh pant or hardik pandya 
but they mentioned mortal and scout and that just shows you where young people are and it's across india right if i show you my distribution of cities it's not like you know tarun and i have been this business long enough where you know there used to be tier 1 platforms there used to be tier 2 platforms this is the first time i'm seeing a pretty even thing because anyone anywhere is like i can make it and some of the top guys today there is mavi who is from sangrur it's a small town in punjab he is a top player and you will see this iconic figure i cannot forget he had like some 40000 people watching him he's got his uh, quilt on wo rajai mein baitha tha and he's playing with his pillow in front and he's playing and he's a he's really good and then on the other side you have someone like a jonathan who is from bandra right very urban sort of uh, uh, kind of milieu so i think it's across countries and we are it will take time it's not going to happen right away i think depth is money said is is something that will happen over time um but it's it's a really really exciting time uh, to work in something like this anirudh then manish i'll just uh, uh, one one sort of follow up question so you know a, a lot of us read these headlines about 300 million dollars of sort, sort of total esports winnings around the world uh, you know we hear about you know people like total gaming and few others and you gave a few examples making literally millions of dollars a year on on this stuff right uh as you look at tam in india today and maybe projected out say 5 years uh what's the like you know beyond the headline like you know i i will popping numbers like just break it down and make it a bit more real for you know people to understand what's the real tam here what's the opportunity you know for somebody who's looking to start up in this space like h- how should they look at it and not just today right but maybe if i was from today uh what does that look like and how do you how do you guys see it ani you must be fresh from the fundraising <laughs> no i actually think about this question quite a bit because india is obviously such a large market when you look at you know we have call it 700 million internet users as ayush mentioned earlier 400 million gamers i personally believe the word gamers is going to be extinct in uh, you know 3 4 years it's going to be like saying do you watch television series or whatever like nobody asked that right you ask how much the viewership was for a particular um, you know show or whatever so i think that's the same thing uh, that you will see so from a user count point of view you're looking at you know i think the just the mobile arcade type games will be you know 300 400 million plus users easily i think everybody is going to be gamers so whatever 700 million internet users are there today will be all gamers everybody playing something and you also have like a big cohort of young people graduating who played games and know how to uh, operate there in terms of the market size look depending on where you operate right if you're a publisher your market size is a bit different if you are a game streaming platform it's a bit different um, but i think multiple multi billion dollar businesses will get built it's not even um, you know that okay like you know is i want to reach 100 million dollars in revenue i think you can easy, easily beat that and that's just from simple um, sort of willingness to pay analysis we have done internally where our investors have done it and in the numbers actually higher than what i thought and i think the other way i try to triangulate this is okay look gaming itself will be 7 8 billion dollar business uh with a lot of that might be rmg like 30 40% might be rmg um but a lot of the rest is going to be uh, kind of typical gaming on the other hand you have online video which is subscriptions as advertising that is also going to start moving towards this right so towards what i am doing but also in general like as people if you think of uh, video games as frontline entertainment which i do um and which entertainment execs used to laugh at me when i used to say that five years ago but um you know uh today i think their market share is actually under danger which is why you see netflix making the first steps towards starting a gaming franchise right and you know you know today you're looking globally i don't know like and tj will know this better than me but you know one 180 billion 200 billion is market size of uh, video games versus some of the other guys like box office is much smaller uh, you know music is much smaller i think vod is the only one which is even in the same ballpark and it's also i think like 50 60% lower so i think there is no reason india with the advent of mobile games of the kind of scale and size that we've seen now with battlegrounds mobile india free fire uh, more are coming and because every publisher has now seen this like they've seen that oh the users exist they can spend they're going to show up so i think once that happens you're going to have much more content and then that opens up the rest of the ecosystem quite a bit 
Um, so yeah, my 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 view is that it's a very very large time, and I think you just pick a particular thing that you can get really good at. And even you know we we don't talk about PC gaming. We kind of treat it like the small thing that kind of sucks. But even PC gaming in five uh, five years is going to start looking like bigger than many other gaming markets, and it's kind of that like ignored opportunity. Like, what are you going to do with those guys? But those guys are the highest spending category inside gaming. So you can pick your own um, kind of vertical which you like, and you have somewhat of a wedge in and 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 get stuck in there. Thanks, Anirudh. I think this would be a good time to bring in TJ to give us a global outlook on the space as well, right? Especially when we talk about the global TAM, Thomas, what do you think has enabled China and Southeast Asia to become one of the largest esports markets in the world, right? And what could be the learnings for Indian counterparts? Yeah, I think that you know it's really been exciting to see uh, is that uh, all of the e-streaming stuff from mobile has grown like really incredibly as all the mobile networks uh, took off, started to have. You know, good cheap data available. Uh, people really always want to engage in these social activities around something that they you know share an interest around. So traditional sports is really that you know something that brings us together to learn a lot more about it, to enjoy together, give us that conversation backing. And on you know the you know esports side, uh, the the mobile games as they mature. They give us an opportunity to watch that incredibly skilled gameplay, but also to come in and participate in, in doing it ourselves. And so, what we saw happen, you know, in a lot of places in Asia is that you know start to see people at you know dinner, and after dinner they pull out their phones and they're playing a match just after if that's their dessert, right? And I think that's something we don't really see, like in the U.S., that you know being you know sort of a global platform. We have the opportunity to experience that, uh, and you know we saw the trajectory is very different in sort of the Western markets and the Asian markets. Uh, so I would say that you know we're starting to see things ramp up in Europe uh, a little bit in terms of uh, the adoption of mobile mobile esports and uh, mobile e streaming. Uh, and it's a couple of years later, right? Because we really saw everything blow up. You know, probably earliest in Thailand. And Vietnam around 2016, 2017, and I think you know at that time you know we saw you know India didn't grow as quickly in terms of like adopting at least our platform and technology, and the big factor that we saw there is just the cost of mobile data, and so I think that you know as Reliance brought the unlimited data to be like an absolute standard in India, that really unlocked like a huge part of our industry. Uh, and so I think that's been, you know, really exciting to now have the opportunity to reach, you know, a billion more consumers there. Um, and, you know, I think that more recently, you know, what we see is like, you know, what are the big events that make people believe that gaming is cool? Like, not cool for geeks, but like very good for everyone. You know, America's moment was really like Twitch um, with Ninja playing with Drake. And that was like huge. It just unlocked a whole wave of, of interest in online streaming and respect basically for that, that that's a real thing. And I think that that's what a lot of these really top stars and top, uh, top quality esports content can serve as, as something to show that off. But I think, you know, we have to all be creative to help um, inspire those moments to happen. I, I don't think you can really script the best ones but I think it's those things that will push us, you know, to the next phase of this. Yeah, yeah. And Manish would love to get your thoughts in as well. Um, how far do you think we are from where China is today, right? Um, China has uh, specific stadiums where esports is played, right? So how, how far do you think we are away from that? And what would it take us to get there? So uh, Rahul, if you look at it, esports, is an outcome of the underlying multiplayer games. Uh, if you do not have, and my personal opinion is for a game to really become qualified for an esports viewership business model, it needs to at least have seven, eight million DAOs, 30, 30, 50 million miles. If you really do not have that kind of scale, you will not be able to generate those CCUs, which I was talking about, those viewership 
and then the fame uh, i can't become like bachpan mein mummy bolti thi na panch ki panch bachcho class mein first aa gaye or that doesn't make sense right so you need to be really be a hero among a large community uh, so that's exactly what is so what is missing there uh three years india has now at least got some respectable number of in app purchases as a business market like 2017 We were number four in downloads. We were doing fifty million dollars of IAP as a country, right? Now fifty million dollars of IAP. No global publisher would even maybe really waste their time. Kudos to Tencent and PUBG to take this market, build that base as PUBG, create that multiplayer environment, invest in the infrastructure, and coupled with the improvement in our mobile network infrastructure, right? Now fast forward today, at least my. sources and anecdotally i understand that it is roughly around crossing 700 million kind of a number in terms of an app purchase so that's what we are talking about 17 to 21 22 and that makes it sense at least some exciting but not a rounding of figure for global publishers to come and start looking at india right uh how many such games as i mentioned earlier today are really esports viewership world right in mobile in pc there is a very hardcore audience it's a very niche audience the engagements are different but the business model has to be very different it can't be a volume based business models now in china just to juxtapose this we have maybe 80 million multiplayer uh, players which are mid core hardcore in india today and there will be a right 500 600 million guys in china so that's the juxtaposition of numbers which makes it a very attractive market for you to look at and as anirudh was talking about 900 million indians will become gamers this question of how many gamers will cease to exist because it's a, it's the most dominant form of entertainment which will happen out of that the key question on esports should be how many of them are really becoming a multiplayer two teams versus one versus we we one v versus uh, one versus one three versus three five versus three five versus five kind of tournament formats which they will continue to play but that's where these sports really kicks in the whole competitive piece and i think that is a 5 6 years away it's not going to really kind of change that it has been accelerated and that's the reason why all of us are excited about it um, it last two years has accelerated the adoption of it and what what adoption in my opinion is that the parents which never understood what their kid is doing on pubg or a free fire now at least they understand what the kid is playing because they were forced to be locked down in one house for 20 months and they had to really coexist uh, and that's why they are now understanding these games and that has kind of really got it a mainstream acceptability and from that onward point onward i think the market needs to really have 2 3 billion dollar depth in terms of in app purchases it needs to have 200 million 250 million mid core hardcore users more number of games will happen and then whether it's anirudh or whether us we will be really seeing a hockey stick curve in our revenues in our time spent in engagement any metrics you talk about okay this is very helpful manish thank you so much now did you did you ayush gave all my notes to manish or no no <laughs> <laughs> he he got he got uh, he got access to your investor present <laughs> <laughs> thanks for tuning in for more matrix moments episodes you can head to www.matrixpartners.in/matrixmoments You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube for more updates.